Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, welcome back if you're a returning subscriber and if you are a new viewer, welcome to whatever this is, this crazy show. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Kayleen. Uh, I am the fiber artist and principal designer and dyer behind Little Bean Crochet, which I'll link up here for you guys. And I dye my yarn line, which is Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn. Um, so this is just a little chit chat type of channel where we talk about my current dyeing. We talk, like that sounds great, my dyeing. We're talking about dyeing here. Uh, we're talking about dyeing yarn and we also talk about crochet and knitting and crafting. And at the end of the podcast, I always do a shop update. So for those of you who are watching, who like to hear what's going up in the shop or what I've recently been working on that's in the shop for sale or soon will be for sale, um, then stay tuned to the end. I do just want to let you know that at the end of the podcast, I do have, there's um, a little bit of an incentive going on right now in my shop, which includes a giveaway. So if you're interested in hearing about that, stay here till the end and I'll talk more about it. So... Welcome back guys. I hope you had a great week. Today is Tuesday and it is filming day for me. It is Tuesday, August 2nd. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. Yay for me. Uh, no, it's just another year for me. Uh, I'm 32 years old now. I can say I'm 32. I'm fine with that. Um, and so this week's been a little bit different for me. It's been a little bit busy in terms of family activities with the children and with my husband and my brother came to visit this weekend. My mom is here visiting this week. So we're just keeping busy as best we can. And, um, you know, it's life. It's life. So let's just jump into everything. So I wanted to start this week with dyeing because I have some fun things that I've been working on um, creativity wise uh, in terms of the shop and also in terms of just having fun with dyeing yarn. So one thing I did want to share that I did change a little bit from my shop which was my logo. So I designed my own logos and the first logo I had put out for my yarn was kind of a I got to get this out because I really want to release this stuff out into my shop for you guys and so the first logo that I did for my Little Bean Loves hand painted yarn line uh, was not that great and it was just um, a logo that I could get out and it was a preliminary idea. So this week I created my own little logo. It looks so cute. So I made this myself. The packaging is my own. I cut and package everything myself. Everything is labeled myself with stickers and um, handwritten handwritten things. So I cut all these. These are mine. <laughs> I do it all. I don't outsource my stuff and I don't um, buy pre-labeled knickknacks, which eventually I may have to, but I do enjoy this. But I made this. I'm so excited. I'm very proud of it. Um, so yeah, I, I made that this week. So that was one little creative thing that doesn't really have to do with um, dyeing or, you know, making yarn into things. But for another thing that I've been brewing, I'm gonna touch a little bit here and I'm gonna touch a little in my shop updates, but I created some Halloween colorways. Yay! I'm so excited. Um, so I wanted to share these with you. Two of them are Harry Potter themed. Wah, wah, big surprise. But I love drawing from this universe because it's just so diverse. There are a lot of things going on. So for my Halloween colorways, I chose two ideas that I had um, that I was thinking about and I'm, I decided that I wanted to dye the yarn each color on its own base so that I'm dyeing it based on how the yarn is going to take the dye up and what the theme is. So I want to show these to you. So this is the first one. Let's see if I can get a good shot of the sparkle in here. This is called Troll Bogies. <laughs> Troll Bogies. Um, so it is a yellowy, boogery green. It has a lot of uh, tones of green in there that are just kind of disgusting. It's on the sparkle base, so it glistens like a booger. 
and um, it has kind of like a little bit of like a dirty overglaze, so it looks a little yucky on purpose. <laughs> but uh, it looks kind of cool. So this is Troll Bogies. This is one of my Halloween 2016 colorways that I will be talking more about later, but I just want to talk about the dyeing. So this is just a variegated uh, type skein. It's, you know, it's a little more than a tonal. There are, there's a little bit more variation in color than just a plain, you know, green tonal. Uh, and then this is the other Harry Potter themed yarn that I dyed this week. This is on the Single Sock Simple Sock Base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It is fingering weight. And it this is, I'll talk about more later, but this is called The Dark Mark. This might be my favorite one. Um, it is just a deep and dark toned yarn. It has these like areas where it's green, you know, like the dark mark is in the sky and also the Avada Kedavra curse. But it just, it's hard to pick up on pictures. It's easier to show you in a video what this yarn actually looks like and how many tones are actually here. But this was the another one that I dyed just. Okay, so my camera just ran out of space, so I had to clear out some space in my memory. I apologize if this looks weird or in a different position. Excuse me. Excuse me. Got a little sneak peek of the bra. Um, okay, so what I was talking about was my Halloween colorways, and I showed you troll bogies, and I showed you the dark mark. And then this other colorway that I came up with was Mount Doom. This is a patterning colorway so the way it's dyed it's hand painted to pattern um not it's not a self-striping yarn where you have big chunks of color but it is a patterning yarn so you'll have small changes of color in a regular pattern which will pull or will make you know very narrow type stripes if you're making socks so this is a really deep dark colorway the black is showing up a little bit darker on camera than it is in person it's more of like a dark 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 reddish black it's got these deep red tones in it i'm not sure if we can adjust there it goes okay so i'm a little more exposed back here but um you can see how dark and red it is and it has these fiery um red and orange and yellow so this is a patterning type yarn. See, there's a more accurate representation of the color. So these were really fun to dye this week. I am so, so stoked for Halloween. Halloween has got to be one of my favorite times of year. I love doing Halloween makeup and I love dyeing yarn. And so like, this is like the best of both worlds. I'm able to create kind of creepy or more dark themed pieces where I usually try and stay a bit lighthearted um, and kind of pull out of my my cauldron my cauldron if you will so um, so that's what's been in my dye pot this week I don't have a, a lot going on for dye at the moment only because I was working a lot on my packaging and I was also doing a lot of crochet work uh, for consignment and also doing some knit work so I have Let's get to works in progress. So I have two crochet and two knit works in progress. And so I'll start with the crochet because why not? Um, so this is the first piece that I am working on. This is for consignment for um, Earth Baby Boutique, which I will link down in the description box below. They're a boutique out of LA or Sherman Oaks. And so I'm working on this little sweater. This is the Shorty Sweater uh, by Lisa Van Claveren. I have to put this in my Ravelry. I always forget to put stuff in Ravelry, mostly because crochet work doesn't take me very long. So it's like I'm starting something and finishing something in the same day. So I, I never remember, but I am crocheting this using, this is a G hook, which is 4.25 millimeters or US size six. And the yarn I'm using is Cascade Yarns Inker Bay, which is 50% superwash merino and 50% cotton. Um, they do recommend a US 6 or 7 hook or needle. Um, it's Easy Care, which is great for kids' items, and I usually like 
to do things that are easy here when I make kids items. So this sweater is actually super cute. Um, it's kind of, it's not super short like a bolero, but it is kind of a half length sweater. So I'll put a picture here of the sweater from the pattern. Um, I believe it is a paid pattern, so I'm not gonna give too much away, but it's a sweater where you're crocheting pieces and then sewing them together and then sewing this and stitching the sleeves and then the border. So right now I'm about 65% done. I have the other sleeve and the rest of the border to do. Um, and then just weaving in all my ends, which are all tucked in on the inside of this sweater. Um, I do have to say that right now it looks a bit rough and unfinished, but when you finish the ribbed edging, it really gives um, a nice texture to the whole piece. So that's piece one that's in progress. And then piece two is a little bigger, so I have to stand up. And if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, which I'll link down below, I never told everybody my information, so I'm just gonna put those on the screen, right there. Um, and I will be right back. So this piece is a piece that I am working on as a commission piece. This is a mermaid blanket. If I'm putting it on the floor, this is how high it comes. I made, it's, it's being made for a child who is, I believe, nine or 10 years old, but we made it larger to, she's a little taller and um, we wanna make sure she can use it for quite a long time. So um, I am five foot two, and so this comes all the way up to my bust when the the tail is on the floor. So this is the bottom of the tail. Um, it's made with just a Bernat blanket yarn. It's double stranded with loops and threads, um, Charisma yarn in the electric colorway, and it comes out quite lovely. I like how it looks like scales, but it's not it's not stitched scales, which makes it a very, very quick stitch. I did all of this probably in two hours uh, sitting on my couch. I used a pattern, but I modified it. Um, if I can remember, I will put the pattern here on the screen so that you can see um, the pattern I started with at least to give credit where it is due, but I did alter the pattern. It's pretty much not the same pattern anymore because I changed I changed the stitch count, I changed the needles, I changed the direction in which I was laying the blanket and how I stitched the blanket together. So really, I, I ended up not using the pattern <laughs> in the way that you would traditionally use the pattern. So that's the body of the mermaid blanket. It's so soft. And then I have the fin. The fin. So the fin is being done with a little bit of pink in it because the girl really likes pink. And so what's going to happen is on my edging on the blanket and in the fin, so it's hard to show because I've only got, I don't know, less than 50% of the fin, but what will happen is this will gather at the top and the fin spreads out like this. So I am about just over halfway done with the fin. I've already started adding rows on. I did use the method that they used in the pattern, but I changed the stitch count, the needle size, um, pretty much everything. <laughs> but I'm using the technique that they're using and how they are um, extend the rows and the ribbing technique that they use. So that is the fin. So I am probably 80% done. This I should be able to get done tonight and then I should be able to stitch everything together and get the edging done by tomorrow. This is a Christmas gift, so it's not really a huge rush, but it's a pretty cool project. Hopefully I just cut out all that rustling and if I didn't, I apologize for your ears if that was kind of loud. So my two knitting projects. So one I might just pull out and be done with because I made another mistake and now it looks totally different and I'm not sure why. It's kind of frustrating. Um, and then another one I am so excited about. 
I can't even tell you how excited I am. It's a project that I was so intimidated to do. So first let's start. This is the honey cow. I showed this last week on the podcast. Um, I haven't made much more progress because of a couple of things, which I will show you. So here it is. As you can see, I've changed needles. These are metal needles. These are the um, Platinum, Nova Platinum. Uh, what is it? Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride Nova Platinum needles. They're just, uh, I don't know what material they are, but they're metal. And so here's the honey cow. As you can see, not much progress has been made. So what I did, I took, when I taught on Saturday down at my local yarn shop, I teach crochet every Saturday. And I bought some needles and I bought these. This is another pair of US 8s, which is a five millimeter needle, which is what the pattern calls for. And so I transferred the cowl onto these needles. And I still wish that these needles were larger because these are still just too short. But I had the pattern going and then I went to pick it up today and I started going the way I thought I should have been and somehow the stitching looks different and I'm not sure if it's because I changed needles or what so I'm thinking that I'm just gonna pull it out and either start over again or just start a new project or you know dye this up and make it into something else because this is just my my DK base so it's no love lost I mean this was kind of a fun pattern to start with but I don't like how it bunches up on the needles like this and I'm just not in love with it. I'm just not, it's not speaking to me. So I might frog this ribbit. Um, so that's that. Then this, which I'll talk about this in a second, but the work in progress that I want to show you is a sock. Everybody cheer. Yay. So this is the Rose City Rollers pattern. It's on Ravelry. I can't remember the artist who designed it. Uh, so I'll just put it on the screen. Just pop it on the screen there, Kayleen. Future Kayleen. Make sure you annotate this and put things on the screen and in the eye box. Do it. Okay, so these are the Rose City Rollers. I just started turning the heel, so starting my reduction and can I just say that I am pleasantly surprised at how easy these are because I'm I'm intimidated by knitting because I don't know how to read the patterns well I don't know how to read the work very well and I'm, I'm so nervous about dropping stitches because with crochet you have a safety net you're building knots on knots and each stitch is cast on and cast off cast on and cast off and then knit, it's just all live all the time. And I'm just like, ooh, if I drop something, it's gonna be the worst day ever. So I decided to start with Rose City Rollers because the one, they're short socks, so they're gonna take less time, which I'm all about. And I love ankle socks, and I just love the way that they look. So I started with this, I'm back on four needles right now, and I'm just starting the heel turn, so that's the shape of the sock. It fits my heel. Um, I feel like the width like the circumference of the sock is gonna to be too big. I cast on 64 stitches on my Knitter's Pride Carbons. These are US size one, which is 2.25 millimeters. Yes, it's 2.25 millimeters. So I feel like this is gonna be a little too big. Um, so I might not wear this, or I might only do one. Um, but I did this in my Lighthouse colorway, Lighthouse Sunset colorway which is dyed very similarly to the Mount Doom colorway. Um, it's different, obviously different colors are in here. We have some maroons and navy and yellow and red and orange-ish colors, but it's, the design's a little bit different than this. This has the deep blacks and reds and oranges. So, but it will look kind of similar, like patterning up uh, quite similarly. Let's show the other side. So I made some mistakes back here with my slipped stitches um, in this pattern. This is a free pattern, so I can share a little bit. So the heel is made with a heel flap and a gusset, and the heel flap is made by doing a knit and a slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip, 
and it somehow I got messed up and some of my slip stitches that are raised here on the heel got shifted over so for like a couple of rows it got messed up in different areas so the top part of the heel looks a little weird but down here is where I really hit my stride and just did it short rows were not that bad any crocheters who are nervous about doing a sock and worrying about reducing the heel it really wasn't bad at all you just have to think about the anatomy if you're good at reading the anatomy of a crochet project or um, whatever you'll be okay with reading this pattern um, the way she does the decreases and writes it it's easy to see where you're supposed to put the two stitches together and reduce by a stitch so each row is reduced by one stitch as you go down and she tells you how many stitches you should have left on your needles so if you count and you have one more or two more you know that you have you know two more rows to finish and she tells you to finish on a purl row so that was also really helpful I finished and I knit through all my stitches and I I knit through all of them and I'm like oh this is the end so I counted and I had 21 stitches and I read the pattern and it said you should have 20 stitches and you should end on a purl row so I was like oh okay so I just went right back down the row again same patterning da 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 da, -da. finished on the purl row had 20 stitches and then, you know, and followed the instructions to shift things over to four needles. I was so scared to use DPNs. I still am a little intimidated by them, but it actually makes it a little bit easier to swallow. Um, makes the pattern a little easier to swallow because you're only working on so many stitches at once. And the way, at least this pattern's written, I, again, I'm not a sock knitter. This is my first sock ever. Um, the way she labels the needles, it's so straightforward that it's kind of, it would be silly if you couldn't follow it. Um, if you're at least somewhat experienced in reading a, a knit or crochet pattern. So that is my first little sock and I'm so excited. So it is coming along very well. I probably will finish the gusset, the reduction tonight and hopefully we'll start on the body of the foot. Um, tonight or tomorrow but I'm excited and I'm really excited to see this yarn knit up I was complaining all last week I can't knit socks blah 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 I'm doing it I'm just sucking it up and doing it and it's kind of sad I put this on my foot and I'm like oh I shouldn't have put it on my foot because then I realize how long I have to go <laughs> down my foot <laughs> to the toe box so that's it check it out that's awesome. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of myself. So that's it. I do not have any finished objects to show. Wow. You know, uh, unless you want to count the cowl that I'm going to frog because that's finished. But let's move on to acquisitions. So acquisitions. I bought my first set of double pointed needles, which are these, the Knitter, Knitter's Pride Carbons needles. They're made they're in, of carbon fiber. These are US size 1, 2.25 millimeters. They're nice and sharp on the ends, which I really like. Uh, I've come to know that I like a sharper needle. Uh, the stitches, they don't slide too much. They have a reasonable amount of grip, so I'm not worried about the needle uh, falling out of my work, at least right now. I don't want to jinx anything. Uh, and then another acquisition are the circular needles that I've showed you and a second pair of circular needles which I don't have here which are US size 6 needles which are also another really common needle. Um, and then this little project bag that I bought at my local yarn shop. This is a local girl. This is uh, stitched by Jessa Lou and she I believe is in Western Massachusetts. Um, if you don't know I am living in Massachusetts. Yeah, so she's out in Western Massachusetts. I'll put up her business card here. So my local yarn shop carries her bags. If I can find any more of her information, I'm not sure if she sells on Etsy. I haven't, I haven't researched her any more than just seeing that her business cards are here. But she makes these cute little project bags. And I needed one for this. Um, this has a cute little bumblebee charm. And she's apples and pears. Just like it, just like it a lot. 
I'm very excited for that. Um, let's do a little blabber. Let's talk. Let's talk. Well, at least let's revel in the Netflix show Stranger Things. Um, a lot of people have been talking about it online and I am obsessed. We binge watched it all last week. We finished the last episode on Sunday and I'm just I, I want the next season to be right now. So I'm not sure how they're going to structure the seasons. I haven't read into too much of what's going to happen. I assumed that they were going to go down the route of the, um, you know, like American Horror Story where each season would be an encompassing season. But the way that they left the last episode of this season makes me believe that it's just going to be a continuing story of the characters who are in the story. So I don't want to give away too much of the show. If you like sci-fi type things, if you like mystery kind of horror genre type shows that are a little bit suspenseful, um, that have pretty good character development, you will probably like this. I really liked it a lot. So that's all I really wanted to say. Um, and I also wanted to say that it's been a very inspiring season for me. So I'm thinking that I may dye some yarn based off of the show. I might. I might. I have ideas. I have all these ideas. If you know me, I'm an ideas girl and I just have all these ideas. So, so stay tuned for that. Uh, follow me on social media and you'll probably be the first person to see whether something comes out of my pot that is themed for Stranger Things, which I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking yes. So, all right, mm -hmm. that's really the end of the update section. Now I kind of wanted to do another Ask Me Anything. I posted up on social media this morning to, you know, a couple of groups and also on my Instagram. And I also have a thread up in my podcast Ravelry page for an Ask Me Anything, which still doesn't have any posts. Is that Panda? That's okay. I'm, I'm not very good at Ravelry, if you couldn't tell. I'm still kind of learning their format, which is a little bit not intuitive. Um, so I'm trying to like get the feel for the Ravelry group, but I do have more people. There are nine members now, which is nice. Hi guys, if you're watching, <laughs> nice to see you. Um, so there are no questions in there, but I do have some questions on Facebook and on Instagram where I had asked so I will start on Facebook. So the first question I have is from Karen and she asks me a bunch of personal questions, which is fine. So she asks me, uh, maybe you've been asked these, but here it goes. How many kids do you have? How do you juggle family life, Indie Dyer life, and knitting and crochet time? And do you have sister wives? <laughs> no, uh, I am in a monogamous marriage, but you know. I might have a spare room over here with an extra bed if any of my little knitting or crochet friends want to come hang out. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, uh, oh my gosh, two weeks in a row, texts, messages. What is he asking me? Anyway, anyway, let's answer these questions. Um, so how many kids do I have and how do I juggle family life and crafting and all of that? So I have two kids. Um, my oldest is Cecilia and she will be three in September and my baby is going to be one in a couple of weeks. Oh my gosh, Tucker, he will be one. And I have a husband. We used to have a cat. We used to have two cats. One cat passed away. And weed whacking. What is this? Um, we used to have two cats. One cat passed away a couple of years ago. He had uh, lymphoma pretty much throughout his whole entire body, which was really sad. And my other cat, we had to rehome with my husband's grandmother because my son is really extremely severely allergic, like breaks out in hives and open eczema and it's really, really bad. So, so yeah, so that's us. Where my, my husband's last name is Lemieux, Lemieux, Lemieux. Uh, in the town where we live, they're known as Lamo. They say Lamo instead of Lemieux, but the proper French pronunciation is Lemire. I never legally changed my name, so technically I'm still Kayleen Weaver. 
On Facebook, I'm Kayleen Lemieux, but I'm still Kayleen Weaver. So if you ever see me as Kayleen Weaver or KM Weaver, that's why, because I really didn't change my name when I got married. Whoops. Um, so how do you juggle family life, indie dye life, and knitting and crochet time? Well, it, I'm a wizard. Uh, I'm a wizard mermaid princess. No, um, I really just try and take some time that I can to focus on the kids. So in the morning time, it's really focused on them, getting out of the house, having really solid playtime, um, keeping them occupied, and then I really capitalize on naps. So naps are my jam. I really uh, like to do as much as I can during the nap time, especially when my son is napping because he's just learning. Uh, he's, cr he's crawling really well. He's, he's crawling pretty good. And uh, he likes to cruise on furniture and now he likes to try and climb. So he's learned how to climb stairs and onto chairs and not, not tall chairs, but like small chairs and onto shelves. So my time when he's awake is pretty much following him around to make sure he doesn't kill himself. Um, but my daughter, she really, she's very, very good. And she has a really great attention span. Um, I can usually give her an activity, whether it's coloring or painting or a movie or iPad, which is almost always like a guaranteed one hour adventure. Um, and she keeps herself busy. She likes to be involved in things. So where I can have her help me, I do. And you know, I just try and take advantage of all the free time that I possibly have when I'm not having to take care of the kids and you know, they want my attention, they always come first. So family first and then dyeing, crafting, and crochet come second, but I really do make an effort to make time for it during the day because if I don't, then I may never do it. So, um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. That's the answer to that question. I hope that was sufficient. Uh, let's see here. So then on Instagram, I have a couple of questions. So one is from Crochet Cakes on Instagram. She also has a podcast here and she gave me a lovely shout out in its own video. She ordered some uh, yarn for me. I'm pretty sure this is the same girl. Let me just double check. Oh yes, it is. Okay. So she ordered some yarn from me and she put it on her podcast and it didn't make her podcast recording it came after and so she made a special video for my yarn so if you haven't checked her out you should go check her out I'll put a link up here for her shop uh, for her shop for her um, YouTube channel but so she asks me what is or are your favorite items to crochet or your favorite crochet pattern so I would say that my favorite item to crochet is a hat hats are so easy and it's funny because I don't wear hats uh, I tried on a hat last week and you can see it just looks really awkward. I have a really awkward head and ears and I'm more of like a headband kind of girl. But I like little projects. I like projects that I can pick up and put down really easily. Again, tying back into the whole family life thing where you really don't get a lot of free time or the free time you have is really compartmentalized. 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. So those are my favorite items to crochet. As far as favorite crochet pattern, I don't have a favorite pattern, but my favorite stitch is a half double. That's the most natural for me. It's the most fluid for me. Any pattern that's written in a half double crochet, it goes the fastest. And I really like the look of it. I like the look of a beanie that's done in half double crochet versus single or double. And you get a nice effect if you do a half double through the back loop. You get a nice patterning that kind of mimics a knit two curl two pattern. Again, I love knit and I try to make crochet look like knit at all times, so <laughs> that's kind of my favorite. And then, forgive me, I may butcher this, but you're, this other girl asked me, I think, I assume you're a woman, I'm not sure, uh, S. Raha, S. Raha, S. R. A. J. A. H. 1. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what are your favorite colors to crochet with? Also crochet books you like. Um, you also mentioned knitting. What books do you like to use to learn from in websites? What else do I like to do? That's a lot of questions, but I'll do my best. Um, my favorite colors, I like all colors. I prefer kettle dyed variegated yarns to crochet with, especially in things like hats or mittens or scarves, um, things that don't pull. Oh, or just solid colors. I don't like weaving it in, so normally I don't like doing a ton of color work where, like doing graph hands or 
you know, in knitting it would be more like Fair Isle stuff. I don't like doing striping, but I will do it. Uh, I like making little appliques, so like little hearts or stars or other embellishments if I'm doing uh, baby knits or baby crochet. Um, and crochet books that I like. I don't have any books that I like, but I do... I watch a ton of YouTube tutorials if I'm learning new stitches, and I really like a lot of the things that the crochet crowd does, so I'll link their channel here. Um, they have tons of tutorials, tons of patterns, you know, how-tos on basic techniques and even more complicated techniques, like uh, Tunisian or like kind of like crochet knit hybrids, like crow knitting. So it's really, um, they have a really great channel, so I recommend checking them out. And then... Snack. Do you want something for snack? Okay. okay, we'll get something for snack. Banana chips. That was snack today. Okay, so the last question I had was um, what books do you like to use to learn for knitting or websites and then what else do I like to do? So as far as knitting, I kind of taught myself how to knit. So with a lot of YouTube tutorials, looking up different techniques. Um, I mentioned last week that I hated knitting until I learned how to do like a more of a speed purl where you're keeping the yarn on the back end of the work. So I think I showed it last week, but um, I do a continental style knit where my yarn, what are you doing? I don't know how this just happened. This is impossible. What has just happened? Okay. Okay. So I do a continental style knit where it's hard to show because I have the, hmm, here we go. So I keep my yarn, it's at the back of my work and it's held in my left hand where most, so if you can see it here, this is my left hand, this is my right hand. And so when I'm working my stitches, I'm literally holding it the same exact way that I would do as I would do on crochet. And then for my purl, Continental style purling, a lot of them will say still put your yarn on the front of your work, but I'm still not entirely comfortable doing that. So you'd purl and then flick your yarn over and then through. So I still put my yarn at the back of my work and then I do this funky purl where I go behind my yarn and then up and over, which I can show if you're interested. Again, you just let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a little tutorial on how I learned how to knit. I'm happy to do a whole entire video on that. Um, so I really just taught myself off of YouTube and then any stitches that I was interested in learning I would just look up off of YouTube or um, just go Dr. Google, you know, how, what does SSK mean? And then I learned like, you know, slip slip knit, so you slip per while, slip knit wise and then put them back and then knit them both, so things like that. So I just, I literally just Google things or I look up on YouTube video tutorials if I'm really unsure about knitting and what I'm doing. And then what else do I like to do besides dye yarn? Um, sleep. <laughs> um, I like doing all kinds of crafts. I've dabbled in painting and glass blowing, which was really fun, ceramics. Um, in this cabinet here, I have a ton of glass blown work and hand done ceramic work that I did when I was in college. Um, painting, drawing, pretty much a lot of creative things I like to read. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to read nowadays only because of the kids. I also like to listen to audiobooks, uh, which I used to do again a lot more before I had kids if we were on long drives or I was on break or if I was at the computer at work I'd be listening to audiobooks, but I don't really have the luxury of tuning out the world right now while I do my job, which is to take care of my kids. So. Um, I like listening to music, I like watching movies, I like I like just being chill, relax, hanging out, having fun. So those are the things that I like to do and uh, yeah, I just like to be creative and you know keep, I like to keep busy so um, that's about it and I don't think there are any other questions here and I want to just say a little thank you to everyone who contributed a question this week. It makes my time go by a little quicker because I like answering questions like this um, and it gives me something to talk about so I don't have to blather along and make up things as I go along so uh, yes that was a very weird face I just made and I don't even care I don't even care so that's the end of the podcast 
for Mel. Uh, if you are not interested in shop updates, then I will see you next time. So I am just going to continue right now, go into shop updates and things that are happening, which includes a giveaway and some cool bonus things that are happening. I am so excited. Okay, so the things that I have dyed up this week, I have put two sets of minis in two colorway selections. So there are two sets of each available in my shop right now. If you haven't gone there, go there now in the ready to ship section. There are two mini sets. So these are 20 grams a piece. I have a, two sets in everyday sock, which are these, and two sets in sparkle. This is the burrow color selection of my minis. So these are just total minis. Um, we have a maroon, aubergine, a charcoal. This is peach and this is sand dune and this is the burrow. Ready to go if you're doing mini swaps or you have edge work to do or fun color work to do. These are perfect so it's a set of five. The other dye that I did this week for minis was honey dukes. Um, this is also a set of five available in Two are available in Sparkle, two are available in Everyday Sock. It's a yellow, peacock blue, bright aqua. I always say ballerina pink, but I think it's Valentine blush is this color. And this is green apple. Uh, also tonal minis, 20 grams a piece in both bases. So all the minis. So my husband, Let's just do a little tangent here. So my husband says to me, I have these all laid out on this table. This is my dining table. And he says, Kayleen, those minis are so cute. What? I just want to lay in them, put them all together and lay on them. They look so squishy. Can I ask for a better husband? I don't think so. That was pretty awesome. I was like, oh, you like yarn? Oh yeah, it looks so squishy, I love it. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> So those two mini sets are up, and then the other mini set is up. I didn't, these are hand wound minis. So I, like these I purchase in minis form, so I dye them in the already pre-done skein, so they're a little longer because the skeins that are wound are pretty, are a little bit longer. These I wound myself, but these, so if you have been eyeing the Harry Potter colorways that I have available, like Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder, Dirigible Plums, Flowers for Dobby, um, The Lost Diadem, and Fox Rising, and you're like, hmm, I don't know if I need a whole skein. Well, here you go. I have 20 gram minis in a set. It is the, this, I'm calling this my Harry Potter inspired mini set number one. <laughs> and here they are together. Uh, if you order this set, I am tossing in a 10 gram mini surprise. So you get a nice little surprise in your mini set. Um, but these are awesome for swaps. So if you're doing any swaps this year, um, you can get a 20 gram mini and give it away as a swap. So um, it gives you a chance to either put them in your own scrap blanket, make heels and toes out of fun colors, or just give away for mini sets, so, for a mini sets. Minis swaps this year, which are coming up, so. Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder on Sparkle. Lost Diadem on Sparkle. Uh, Fox Rising on Everyday. Dirigible Plums on Everyday. And Flowers for Dobby on Everyday Socks, so. Those are the minis that are in that set. Those are also available to ship. I believe there are only three left of these sets. And then comes this awesomeness. So, as you know, I dyed these colorways for Halloween. These are my Halloween colorways. I released them a little bit early for pre-orders because I love you guys and I wanna make sure that you get your chance to get some of these. If these are speaking to you, then hop in the shop, put a pre-order in. The bonuses that you get for pre-ordering. One, these are getting shipped out on August 31st. Otherwise, Halloween colors aren't coming to the shop until October 1st. So you get them early. If you have Halloween things that you're looking to knit or crochet and you want to get them done well in advance of Halloween, pre-order. Please pre-order. 
The other thing is that you get a 20 gram mini skein uh, of a Halloween candy theme. I'm gonna have a few available that I'm just gonna randomly pick from. Um, and those won't be, the minis won't be released or revealed till after October 1st, but, uh, or on October 1st should I say, but you're gonna get a bonus mini of a Halloween themed candy. And you're gonna be entered automatically into a giveaway to win a free 100 gram skein of your choice of your base that I have in my shop and color that you want. So pre-order your Halloween stuff now because you are getting free yarn <laughs> and a possibility to win a free skein of yarn from me in any base. So these colorways, so right now Troll Bogies, it's available only on Sparkle Sock as a pre-order because I designed it to be that way. Um, Mountain Doom is available on Everyday Sock. Again, it's a patterning die. So this has not been rescanned because I wanted to be able to show you the the colors in a in a way. There you go. You can kind of see. It's really dark black, red, deep, deep, deep shades. And then these fiery tones. So this will pattern up and it will look a lot like the sock that I showed earlier. Um, so it won't be total stripes, but it'll be stripey pools if you're knitting socks. Pretty awesome. And then the last one that I have is the Dark Mark, which is my personal favorite. Um, and it's dark grayish tones, like different varying shades of gray. But the kicker in here is this green. So it's a very subtle green and it's really hard to tell on photographs because I don't have a camera. I take my photos with my iPhone in daylight as well as I can get it here in my dining room. And um, it's a variegated skein, but it's available on the Simple Sock base, which is a 100% um, Superwash Merino single ply or on my Simple, simple DK base. So. So this is the skein, it's variegated, it's kettle dyed, and it's just gorgeous. So you can see the, the subtle variations in color. So these three are available for pre-order. I think I put up 25 hanks for pre-order on each base. So you have your chance to get what you need for Halloween. You get a free 20 gram mini, and you get entered into a giveaway. So if you haven't done it already, go over to my shop, go to the pre-orders section and put your order in because I want these to go on your body. I want you to make shawls and scarves and hats and lovely things for Halloween and I want you to get free stuff. So if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. Um, I think that's everything. I may have some surprising things for next week to show you for acquisitions because I may have purchased some things this week from a couple of different designers. One is another indie dyer and I'm super excited for this color that I'm getting. And another one is a project bag which I ordered from another podcaster and I'm also very excited about. Which I may hint to in the down bar of who it is. But um, yeah, I'm super excited. So uh, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I have droned on quite a long time. And that's about it. That's about it. Just cue the music. Just cue the music. If you haven't already, my social media is below. I am Little Bean Crochet on um, Instagram, Little Bean Crochet Shop on Facebook. My Etsy is littlebeancrochet.etsy.com. And I'm on Ravelry as KM Weaver. If you have any questions, you're always free to contact me via email here, Etsy, Ravmail, wherever you'd like to contact me, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye!